This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. We've got uh, Devontae Parker, I guess, uh, involved with Michael Thomas in a, in a brouhaha, I guess, if that's what we're going to call it, as uh, they went back and forth yesterday on IG. And uh, I guess, well, you know, what I love about this whole thing with Michael Thomas, and for those of you that don't know, Parker and Thomas, there was a, an Instagram poll out there Monday night and it set off Michael Thomas, and it started a war of words, of course. So the NFL on Fox, the Instagram account, asked, which is tougher, a catch while guarded by Stephon Gilmore, or B, break up a pass while guarding Michael Thomas? So Parker, as you all know, had a really good season last year. He answered A in the comments in the posts, which didn't sit well with the New Orleans wide receiver. So the New Orleans wide receiver said, uh, for you, yes, go go run some numbers up, then you can talk. I lapped you, and you've been in the league longer than me, first rounder. Parker then responded, got some hard feelings there, brother. Let me, let me get targeted 300 times a game. Thomas continued and said, in other words, you weak. They don't even put your name in the same sentence as me. Remember that. And you're still not going to do nothing. It took you six years and 17 weeks to have a good game. Get the F out of here. Blame your parents, not no QB. Quit crying, bro, Parker told Thomas, including several laugh emojis. So after a few jabs from each receiver, Thomas posted the final words telling Parker, you can't even get a seat at the table. Okay. So we all know Michael Thomas, obviously, as a second rounder, has been way more productive than Devontae Parker as the first rounder. But let me explain to you something that I love about all of this. And this, we can make it all we want about Michael Thomas and Devontae Parker and all of that. I don't care about any of that. I actually care about Devontae Parker growing as a player. And we just watched the guy that carried the most swag probably in the history of the game for 10-part documentary in Michael Jordan. And part of being a great athlete, part of being great at anything, is having confidence in yourself. You're never going to be that architect you want to be if you don't have confidence in yourself. You're never going to be leading a a school and be a school superintendent if you don't have some kind of drive. You know what I'm saying? And so it doesn't matter what you do in life. You've got to have some kind of drive, and you've got to have confidence. Confidence is everything in life. You've got to feel like you can accomplish whatever you set out to do. You've got to feel like you can overcome any kind of obstacle that's out there. And Devontae Parker has been a bust, okay? There's no two ways around it. We can't, we can't dodge it. We can't avoid or anything. But what we also can avoid with Devontae Parker is it took him a while but it looks to me like he's the guy that's finally grown up. It looks to me like he's the guy that finally found that confidence on how to keep his body healthy, how to stay on the field. You know, when you talk about that question and he sees Stephon Gilmore, well, you got to, you got to understand this. So the question that they put up, right, is, What's tougher, make a catch guarded by Stephon Gilmore or B, break up a pass while guarding Michael Thomas? Now, he put A, right? Well, who's in his division? Stephon Gilmore. Who did he completely undress in week 17? Stephon Gilmore. He was talking smack to Stephon Gilmore. He's talking smack now to DBs. The fact that he's out on Instagram doing this 
Devontae Parker has taken that step of, you know, he was kind of an introvert. And he was kind of to himself. And maybe that didn't work well for him, being within himself. Because within himself, he's kind of constantly asking himself those questions, questioning his abilities and all of that. Whereas now he's got the bravado, and now he's going to tell you what he's going to do to you now. Instead of questioning, can I do it? Am I going to be able to get it done? Can I stay healthy? Kind of staying within himself, he has opened up now. And and we talked about this last year when when he was playing, that we had never seen this kind of Devontae Parker, ever. I don't remember that kind of Devontae Parker. That was cool last year to see the guy that was having success, staying healthy, and then playing confident. And when you can play confident against Stephon Gilmore and you don't care about going back and forth with Michael Thomas, you got confidence in yourself. And whether he can eat at the table or be at the same table with Michael Thomas or that if he's better than Michael Thomas, look, man, I'm not going to get into those silly-ass arguments. Okay? All I know is it took him a while to figure it out, and I think Devontae Parker has figured it out. I think Devontae Parker has unlocked that beast, and I think that's what we're going to see from here on out. And I think that guy you saw last year is not an aberration. I think the guy you saw last year was the guy finally breaking out of his shell and getting that confidence that he needs in order to succeed. Okay? You know, we can put out a silly-ass poll about who's better and all that, and, you know, it's pretty cool to watch Dolphin fans at least defend Devontae Parker because this is a guy that a year ago you weren't going to defend. Because a year ago you're going into a season and the guy had done nothing. And he had been a complete bust. And in fact, people were wondering, why did they bring him back? If Devontae would have been let go before last season, 99.9% of Dolphin fans would have said, good riddance, get out of here. And I'm one of them. And And I'm a Devontae Parker guy. I wanted Devontae Parker drafted. But, dude, after four years of doing nothing, you kind of like say, well, You kind of are what you are now. And he's looked back at all of us and said, no, that's not who I am. This is who I am. And he went out and had one hell of a season last year and played really well against good corners, made key plays in key moments of games. I I thought the real pinnacle for him was when he left with that mild concussion and came back the following week and scored two touchdowns. That was kind of Devontae Parker breaking through the threshold and saying, yeah, I'm not that guy from the past. I'm not the fragile dude that anything's going to break me down, anything's going to sidetrack me. No, no, no. I'm a different cat now. And so that's where... When I saw that exchange with Michael Thomas yesterday, I loved the confidence that Devontae Parker is now, you know, um, what's it called, displaying on on an everyday basis. The belief he has in himself. And that's the most important thing any of us can have if we're going to succeed at being a parent, at our jobs, at our hobbies. Whatever it is that we do in life, if we have no passion and no confidence for it, it's really hard to excel. You might be talented enough to do something, but you're probably not going to excel and be your best at it. Devontae Parker, you saw, was at his best last year because he was finally confident. And that's what you saw up against Michael Thomas yesterday. It's confidence that 
all right, yeah, whatever, Michael. Yeah, you've been you're a pro bowler for a long time. You've caught 175 balls every single year, but that that doesn't make me any less of a player. And that's the way Devontae Parker is looking at it. And I love it. I really do. I I I thought it was really cool to see that exchange uh between those two. Not because Michael needs anything. He's there. He's already been there. He's arrived. But I think this is kind of part of the growing process for Devontae Parker. And this year, you know, I, I tell you guys all the time that any pro player can have a good week, a good month, a good year. It's the guy that can follow it up. And that's what I'm excited about this season is watching Devontae Parker follow up on last season and and give an F you to the world and say, no, dude, I'm here. I'm, I'm one of the best in the business. Let me show you. I'm one of the best in the business. All right? And to me, that's what stood out. Not the silly-ass conversation between Devontae and Michael and all of that. It was more about Devontae for me. He's, he's growing. He's stepping up. He's, you know. Look, I think Michael Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, first four years of their career, he's, he's the number one guy. He's a monster. I want to say there's no other receiver their first four years that have the number of catches. No. He is, you know, right now the all time guy after four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if he if look, getting to Devontae, if he could do it against Gilmore, is it safe to say Gilmore's so good that he should be able to do it against anybody? Would you put Gilmore there? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, definitely. There's like he's the he's the benchmark. I, I think Devontae played last year like he he can do it against anybody, and I think that's what you're seeing. The swag that he's carrying is that he knows he can do it against anybody, and will end up doing it against anybody. That's the way he looks at all of this. So that's why, to me, that's what stands out is his confidence. Now he has arrived. And, and I think he's one of those guys now that every year he's going to look to prove that he's one of the best out there. Like, X feels that way already. I think Devontae now feels that way, and he's enthused about going out there and proving people that he belongs in the conversation with Michael Thomas because that's what that conversation was about. It's kind of sending a message that I'm going to be in the center stage here and, and answering that 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 uh, Instagram post and putting himself out there. It's because Devontae Parker believes in himself. And, and now you're seeing the reason why he believes in himself because he's going out there and he's having success. And I think this year he's going to do it again, man. I think this year it's another one of those 1,200-plus yard years I think he gets the 10 touchdowns or more. Uh, I think he has that kind of Pro Bowl-like season, and and he gets to that pinnacle that we were all hoping he would be at. Last year, he gave us that taste, that, that, that ability was there. It's still there after all the injuries. Now it's, okay, let me show you last year's not a fluke. Let me now establish myself as one of the better receivers in the league. And I think that's what you're going to see. Are you factoring in Preston Williams and his development? And, you know, because toward the no. end of the year, he was getting double cover because Preston, you know, it was him pretty that's much. What, that's what I'm saying. That it, Like, uh, it does, it's not going to matter. This no, guy's going to show. Preston Williams play. wasn't there at yeah. the end of the year. The guy that was undressing Stephon Gilmore without Preston Williams on the field yeah. was Devontae Parker. So Devontae Parker was a key person down the stretch of these games. And 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 stepping up against Stephon Gilmore in week 17, while it's not a big game because it doesn't mean that you you got into the playoffs or anything like that, it was a big game for Parker. It was a big game for a lot of young guys. It was a big game because it showed you that you could compete and you were competing and beating a team that desperately needed that game. Stephon Gilmore desperately needed to stop 
Devontae Parker, and he could not. Once again, Stephon Gilmore desperately needed to stop Devontae Parker and could not. Confidence, man. That swag that you're seeing from Devontae Parker is so important. You know, sometimes some of us find it annoying when players are overconfident, but there is a rhyme and a reason to it. And if you're not confident, even in the worst moments, it's going to be hard for you to rise above all of that because then you're going to allow it to bring you down. Those guys that are overconfident, it's a beautiful thing because they have no conscience. And so the bad play that happened to them, dude, that's an aberration. That never happens. You know, that's that's the way they look at it. Okay. It's like me missing work. It's got to be something that, you know, it's got to be a hospitalization or something. Not, I'm not missing work. You, you have a I mean? kidney stone and gout combined. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, it's got to be something really, really bad in order to keep me out. That's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Those kind of people are special. Not that I am, but I'm saying those kind of people, the ones that, are able in the face of adversity. You know, like you saw in the last in the last dance, if it was a loss, Michael was like, "We'll be all right." You know, we're we're gonna overcome. And that's what you need that kind of confidence that even in adversity, you know you will rise above it. And that's what we saw from Devontae Parker last year, the guy that was rising above all the adversity, the doubt from us fans and media members and teammates and coaches and front office executives, everybody pretty much said, eh, I don't know if I'll ever get it done. And warranted. And then, yeah, of course. And then the injuries that he's had a plethora of injuries. And yet he overcame all of that. And he found the confidence to go out there and perform and perform at the highest level. So I, I to me, that's what stood out in that exchange with Michael Thomas. And I think it was phenomenal. It so really the was. continue of the turning of the corner, th- th- this is still on the upswing. This guy is a different guy. Yeah, it's a different guy completely. And you're, you're going to see it this year. You're going to see year two of Devontae Parker having, you know, becoming a Pro Bowl type player. 